No is no. Kikari was a vivacious young girl living with her mom in a busy part of Ukukumaiko in Lagos, Nigeria. It was not unusual for her mom to ask her child to go and buy biscuits from Mama BC, whose kiosk served as the local grocery store. It was also usual for the neighbors to watch TV in each other's homes, as not everyone owned one. One day, the evil monster called Rape reared its head in the person of the male neighbor who had always had a smile and a kind word for Kikari. The family did nothing, and so the police did nothing. Hush, no one must know. It's your fault. You've brought disgrace to us, as though this was the fault of Kikari and not the wicked act of a pervert who should be locked away and the keys thrown away forever. Did you know that in Nigeria, in 2020 alone, there was nearly 40% increase in rape and domestic sexual violence against women. Are you aware that in 2018, the official Nigerian Demographic and Health Survey found that 30% of girls and women aged between 15 and 49 reported suffering sexual abuse in one form or another. So this means that one in three women that you know, a child, a sister, a colleague, a friend, a cosmate, a relative has been sexually assaulted or violated. The scary part is she may never speak about it to you or anyone for fear that she is ridiculed and humiliated because of our culture of shaming and because we live in a society which says, why were you dressed like this? What were you looking for there? Good girls don't get raped. How can you say you did not want it? What were you doing there? Now, just to be clear, Rape is a criminal offence in Nigeria. Under the Criminal Code of Nigeria, Section 357 and 358, rape is defined as having unlawful carnal knowledge of a woman or girl without her consent or with her consent. If the consent is obtained by force or by means of threat or intimidation of any kind or by fear of harm or by means of false act or in case of a married woman by pretending to be her husband. Now this offense is actually punishable by imprisonment for life with or without caning. Under the Penal Code of Nigeria, Section 282, a man is set to commit rape who has had sexual intercourse with a woman in any of the following circumstances, against her will, without her consent, with her consent when the consent is obtained by putting her in fear of death or hurt. However, this code is only applicable in the northern states of Nigeria. Yet, according to the International Center for Investigative Reporting website, there have been only 65 rape convictions between 1973 and 2019 in Nigeria. What an abysmal number considering the prevalence of this crime considering that one in three women you know have been sexually molested or assaulted. Is it that the victims are not reporting for fear of shame? Is it that we've kept inadequate records? Or is it a poorly administered judicial system that protects a perpetrator over a victim? How can we explain to people that no is no? How can we remind everyone that a child is not a sex toy? How can we hold our courts accountable when cases are actually reported? How can we rid our society of this despicable act? How can we support rape victims when they actually do come forward? The time has come for changes to the criminal code to be more stringent to punish perpetrators of this crime. There is urgency required in changing the mindset that a rape victim is somehow responsible for this offense. We actually need a sex offenders register where those who have been found guilty can actually be listed to protect us from future occurrences. However, we only have less than 70 names. We need to learn to speak up when we hear such accusations. We need to empower people to actually speak up when they have been victims of this crime. We need to teach everyone that no is no. Mm. Hello? <laughs> All right, go on, comfort. <laughs> this is one topic that 
tears my heart. Um, I have a daughter, and um, even I, as you were right, I think I don't think there's any woman is in Nigeria that has not been a victim of sexual um, assault or indecency exposure. I don't think there's any because we are in a society where it, it, it's almost as if the woman is just there for you know for the taking. Um, I'm. I think the major issue here, apart from the judicial system, is the conspiracy of silence. Mm. And unfortunately, it's the women who drive the conspiracy. You have mothers in homes that know that their fathers, the husbands are sleeping with their daughters. But she wants to save her marriage because society has said she must be married. And, if she, and it is somehow her fault. And so it's a vicious circle. You have aunties that know. You have sisters that know. And everybody says, be quiet. Now, imagine if women who are custodians, especially the women who are custodians and the ones that are the major victims in this, it doesn't mean that there aren't men or boys. I think even some of our laws have been amended to reflect that um, a man can be raped too. Yeah. But because the, the preponderance of the crime is on the side of the female, I feel so disheartened that women are not playing the, the you know, the role enough in this. I think the most recent case we have is that Baba Ijesha case. And one of, a woman just came out two days ago, an older woman to say that she begged Iyabo not to talk. Why? Why? If there's something that was done to this girl that needs to be reported, why is it that we think that these things should be hushed and kept quiet? Unless we break the, this Culture circle of, of conspiracy of silence, honestly, there's nothing that can be done. Honestly, the, the, we probably will not even see any, any rape case in another 10 years, any conviction. Mm, so yeah. we need to speak to women. We need to empower our girls. We need to also tell them that even if it is because they said the girl was walking naked, it does not give any man, right. any That's woman, true. any right to rape. True. Go and report instead that there's a mad person running from the streets mm -hmm. and kind right. of person, but not to rape. Absolutely, I agree with you, uh, Comfort. And you know, another, another big problem, and I don't want to even go into the problems. I'm talking more about the solution, but another big problem is the fact that the little, little things that we allow, you know, that we're allowed to happen that lead to these things. You know, a lot of men are so uneducated and so ignorant. A lot of families are so, I mean, the ignorance is astounding. I have two daughters. I mean, there are certain places I don't hit my daughters when I'm playing with them. So they understand True. that touching this part of your it's body no is not like even by your father. Mm -hmm. You know, they put his oh, uncle. I say, no, it's not your uncle. Is it your uncle? Is it related to me? No, is it related to your mother? No. So he's mister. So there are certain boundaries, boundaries that we have mm. to start. Oh, my daughters are seven and two. You know, from that level, you have to start indoctrinating these things. So they realize that, you know what, even if their mother wants to be unfortunate, or any other family member, by themselves, because they've been empowered, they understand there's some things that should yeah, right, not be and allowed you know, to happen. So we have to start looking at these little mm. things. So someone comes in the house, will come and sit. No, don't sit on his lap. No, yeah. there's a chair. It's, sit it's, on the chair. No you know, area. Because, I mean, maybe 50 years ago, 100 years ago, it was okay to sit on your own. The mind was because they had, Yeah, but today, there are so many people around that even have these tendencies that even they don't know until they, you know, exactly. until yeah. they start to exhibit mm. those things. So mm. it's very important that very early on, we start to indoctrinate our daughters. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's where we have to start now, because we want to go to the 17 men that have been reported since 1970. You know, that's, mm -hmm. I don't even want to go into that. I think, I think dealing with our daughters and, and again, dealing and with sons. the men yes. as yes. well. Because yes. listen, it is, there is nothing for me as barbaric, as inhumane, as, as, use any word, any adjective you want, as rape. Because what you are saying is, it's demeaning, in my view, it's an insult. It's great. It's bigger than saying, like we say, your mother. It's as in this is the height of it, because you're taking someone. Sex is so important that it, it's it, that's someone's pride. Sense, yes. If he's giving it to you or she's giving it to you herself, fine. But you're taking it. I personally feel that it might sound harsh, but I feel any man that is able to rape, she's not just being the sex offenders register. Register should be castrated. Fine, because listen, do I'm, t I'm telling you because I mean, for you to even go, what is it? They said with or without caning. I don't Kenin, understand. I, well, so caning, I mean, that's, we, a, that's <laughs> the minimum requirement. Minimum. So, you know? you see, so that and that's how bad it is for me. But I like to go on the touchy bit a bit, which we are a lot of time we don't like to talk about. And I'll start this way so that we can understand. Listen, if I drive um, a G wagon 2020 model, and I drive it go to Oshodi or let's say any other place, and I leave the ignition in, the key in, I wind down. I come down from the car and I cross the road to buy something and my car is stolen. 
I'll be called careless. But that doesn't mean the, the police is not, is not the responsibility to go look for the car for me. All right. I think looking at the, the demands of our time, looking at the mind frame of men, right? Even some women set these women up for rape. We yeah. need to, and some men are so careless and so weak mentally that anything they see, they must touch. And we don't have a security to protect you. I think our women, not the kids, but the women who have control over their body, who can go to any place at any time, we need to start watching how we appear in certain places most importantly. I know, yes, I know a lot of times we say, As my body, the fact that my body is this doesn't mean, if it turns you, it means you are weak. Yes, we know it's weak. But when it affects you, the law is not strong, uh, not the law this time, because the law is there to protect you, yes. although we don't apply it. But the security and the condition there is not strong enough to, to protect, because listen, that I saw on TV yesterday about six guys that were accused of raping a girl and killing her in a law university of Illinois. <laughs> Looking at them, it's obvious they were on drugs. The amount of drug abuse we have in the system right now, and a man seeing a lady that is already undressed in a particular way, it doesn't mean you don't have your rights. The same way you have your right to drive your car, pack it anywhere. In some, in some places in Lagos, and when you're driving, you hide your phone. You don't hold it. It's your phone. You bought it with your money. But for your own safety, you keep it just to avoid anything going wrong with you. I think we need to no, look no, at that no. as well. I, 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 can't. Aha. I disagree. I, I said it's I touchy, I, but I, I, know. I, I completely disagree with you. I don't okay. agree because that's not a sustainable solution. It's not even a solution. Do you understand? If you see a man walking naked, a man, there are mad men that walk up and down the streets naked because they are mad. Yeah. Do, do, do women go after them and say they want to? Because you don't have that problem yet. No, but, but even women, I don't but, think that's but, a sustainable solution. And it's not even a solution because how do you say I should control what I wear based on somebody? There are women that are hijabed from head to toe, but they get ripped. No, you know, you no, no, no hold on. And that's why I use the car as an example. The fact that you're keeping your car on the road and it's stolen. Now, you can even park your car in the house, put your fence, and people will still check. But yet, when you are in town, you don't say, okay, because I pack it at home and everybody can steal it, you leave it right, right. I, I mean, I in a way that will. I think we need to look at that, that bill that's as well. Even is, that should not, that's the most <laughs> sensitive part and should not be discussed. There are little children. Most of these things happen actually when they are little. The highest percentages yes. are from a certain age bracket, mm -hmm. and they are mostly young, vulnerable yeah. girls. So, whether, so are you saying a child wearing certain things is going to appeal to a man. No, no, listen. That's what I'm saying. There are different aspects, but anyway, we can discuss this on and so, on. So, I, I, so, I, so and, and I know, I mean, and I know this, this has no end, you know, yeah, but just it. to speak a bit to what he said. So, in my understanding of what you're saying yeah. is, let's educate both the younger women and older women. Older women, yeah. You know, so what you educate them on is also important. So, if you say to them, oh, you know, don't wear this or don't wear that, it's, that's not really the conversation. You know, it's not about really what you're wearing. Is first there's a male species that has Who's a problem. Mind? Exactly. Right? Then you must. So if you understand, if you're going to lions, then you know this is a lion. Exactly. If you're going to see a dog, you know this is a dog. You know this so you know dog. The, so, so, so you children want, who don't have the those are exceptional cases. They're not Chinese. exceptional no, I, cases. They're the anyway, most rampant cases. We, we could, well, I, I didn't know that. You know, you know, right? The the a woman's body belongs to her. If she 100%. says no, no is no. There's, there are no excuses Every to it. We need to start to educate the men to do better. Right? We need to start Agreed. to educate men. If there are many women willing to give it up for free, of you don't need to rape a woman. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we hope that this conversation triggers something in you. Um, we, it, it's, it's never enough time for us to deep dive, but we want it to be a conversation starter. Go and have those conversations with people and let's start to fix our nation one, one problem at a time. So join us again next week on another edition of The Advocate. The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng and on Instagram it's plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng and to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com slash the advocate ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel on plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station, and let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.